Hello, my name is John Butler. I am the CEO and founder of Quantum Site. We're a small biotech company in the Bay Area. And our mission is to provide a single platform for analyzing a patient's biopsy. And we really want to generate very precise results on drug therapy response for those patients. Our ultimate goal, our long-term goal, is to speed up the time from patient biopsy to actionable data by about 75%. And I'll show you some of the, uh, the, the, the data or where we want to get eventually. So the reason I started this, it should say, why are we doing this? This is my wife, Stephanie. Um, this picture was taken about seven years ago. 11 years ago, she was diagnosed with late stage metastatic carcinoid cancer. Uh, primary and small intestine had metastasized to her liver. Um, and at that time, I knew very little about cancer. So I decided to quit my lucrative career in operations. My goal was to become the COO of a major organization and essentially study cancer to try and figure out a way to find a drug to treat my wife. And so, um, to treat my wife. Sorry. This is our team. Again, I am the CSO and founder. My background is in biotech, in biotech for about the last 25 years in the Bay Area, developing technologies to answer complex biological questions worked on technologies for high throughput drug screening, um, as well as a, a, several technologies for doing human genome sequencing and human genome analysis. Um, I'm joined by my, our CTO and founder, Bidon. Uh, Bidon comes from the high tech world. I'm on the science side, Bidon is on the engineering side. Prior to coming to QuantumSight, Bidon was at Intel, where he led a group of engineers developing uh, Intel's uh, next generation optics platform. It's a 3D optics platform called RealSense technology that's currently being used on drones and driverless cars. I bring that up because we've actually integrated these high performance optics into our technology to do some pretty fantastic things. Katie Konigsfeld is our research scientist doing cell molecular biology. Aaron RV is our data scientist. Uh, Ed Saleh is our CFO and Bernie Lim is our VP in business development and is responsible for investor relations. Behind this, we have very many uh, consultants and engineering and molecular biologists helping us along, but we are a small company, very scrappy um, and very focused on getting, uh, getting our technology done to work. This is our science and business advisory board. Dr. Ron Davis from Stanford University is known as the George Church of the West. I was a visiting scholar at Ron's lab for a couple of years, and he's on our scientific advisory board. Dr. Anders Grenick Jepsen, CTO of Intel. Chris Love from MIT. Dr. Carl Novena from Dana Farber. He's an immunologist advising us on applications development. And Brock Siegel uh, is advising us on operational and business strategy. So when we, when we talk to uh, oncologists and ask them what their pain points are in terms of in, in, in treating a patient or understanding how to treat a patient, there are really two things that come up. One, slow time to result. The time from taking a patient biopsy to getting some information on how to treat that patient is slow. And also the data that they're getting is, has limited prognostic value. The, 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 again, the data is not giving them a very complete understanding of how to treat those, those patients. Our advantage is that we, we provide pro very precise data. We have an automated system. We, we generate four times, uh, four times more data per sample, and we are integrating AI and machine learning into our systems uh, to speed up the process and to get more, more and more precise data. To date, we've raised $2 million. We just got our proof of concept data January 2nd of this year, so I'll be showing you our, our data hot off the press. And we have active evaluations with collaborators in uh, prostate T-cell receptor sequencing as well as prostate cancer. And recently a group uh, approached us that wanted to study psoriasis. So when we, look at, sorry, when we look at the current workflow for taking a patient biopsy uh, and uh, doing pathology, uh, that workflow requires a lot of equipment, a lot of handoffs, and a lot of time. And the data, the qualitative data, is then compiled into a report and delivered to the patient, I'm sorry, to the doctor, uh, for the doctor to take action on that patient. And it typically takes about four to six weeks. And in the case of my wife, it took about 12 weeks. That's a lot of time, especially for a late stage cancer patient, to wait for some information. What we are attempting to do is drop that time frame down to one week. And what we're doing is we're integrating digital pathology, where again, we're using AI, to map essentially a tissue section, 
an FFPE tissue section that's been stained and identify specific regions within that tissue to interrogate for genetic analysis using our, um, using our automated system. The goal is to automate this entire process down to a week and provide the doctor and patient not just basic information on how to treat with standard of care, but also other markers for other potential drug candidates to treat those patients. So here's how the technology works. This is a demonstration of the AI. We are using lung cancer in this case. We're partnering, we've partnered with a company in San Francisco called 3Scan on the digital pathology and AI algorithms. What we did is we took lung cancer tissue, developed the algorithm, and we asked that algorithm to tell us where the t cancer cells are, where, where's the tumor. Now companies, current companies like Foundation One, for example, will take this information and they will take all of that tumor off of the tissue and put it into one tube. They'll get a couple of million cells in one tube. They'll take that tube and they'll sequence that. And that sequence state is an average of millions and millions of cells. What we are going to do is we're going to take the, path the, the, the digital pathology data and we're going to ask the algorithm to identify specific cells within that tissue, small clusters of cells, say 10, maybe up to 100 cells throughout that tissue. And we're going to extract nucleic acid from those regions and sequence it. So now you're looking at an average of 10 to 100 cells in a given sequencing reaction. Excuse me. That should give us much more precise data. The other thing we're doing is we're integrating that genetic data and pumping that back into our algorithms to continue to improve the digital, the digital uh, algorithms to get better and better at the predictions. So how does the tech work? We take a tissue section, we identify regions of interest, and then we use an inkjet, inkjet technology to place a mask onto that tissue. This mask is hydrophobic. It repels water. That's important, uh, important to, to remember as we go through the tech. And then we go in and again, extract nucleic acid, DNA or RNA, and do genetic analysis. This is, I don't know how to get this to work. That's an inkjet printer. And if the movie was working, you'd see the inkjet printer working. You'd see the slide come in. And it's, it's really an inkjet printer that you would, you would buy, uh, use for uh, at your home. So remember, the mask is hydrophobic. It repels water. What we do is we take advantage of that hydropho hydrophobicity. And in this case, the white areas are the hydrophobic region. The black areas would be the hydrophilic region. Those are the regions that we're going to go and extract nucleic acid from. And what we do is we put little tiny drops of chemistry to extract and prep that nucleic acid for sequencing. And then we run the workflows. And the work workflow is a multi-step uh, reaction. So to deliver reagents for the rest of the reaction, we take another one of these arrays. These, it's called the surface tension array. And we bring the two drops together. We call it a KISS transfer. And we can do thermal cycling and, again, prep in parallel directly on the tissue. Um, and we barcode each region. We can pull all of that into a tube and sequence all of those regions of interest. It's an automated system. The other thing to, to understand is if we were using current workflows, it would cost us $24 to prep a single region of interest um, from a slide. In our system, we've dropped that cost down to fractions of a penny because the volumes we're using are sort of in the nanoliter range and current workflows are using microliter quantities or microliter volumes. Uh, this is a movie of our, our box. It's not, I don't know how to get it to work, but I can show you that later. It actually works, and you see the little drops touch, and I, I can debut the high-performance optics from Intel. Um, I can show you that a little bit later, but it's kind of neat. So this is our proof of concept data. Again, hot off, the, hot off the, 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 the computer. So what we did is, we, in our proof of concept, we wanted to answer three questions. One, can we see differences between tumor and healthy using um, a, a a 177 gene panel for breast cancer. Is our chemistry, how does our chemistry perform versus the gold standard? And three, does our mask work? So we asked a pathologist to identify a tumor in healthy regions. And then I sat down with Badon and we created masks by simply circling the regions of the tissue. And we output these print files. It's simply a PDF file. And this is an example of one of the slides where you can see the tissue open in the, the, the tissue with the mast area. So how do we do? Do we see a difference between tumor and healthy? When we did multivariate analysis, we got a low co coefficient, which means yes, we can. Is our chemistry the same as the gold standard? When we do multivariate analysis, we get a very high correlation. And as a matter of fact, the chemistry is nearly exact. That's extremely important to us. Next question is, does the chemistry work? Yes, it's about 95% effective. So we're very excited about these results. 
Um, I mentioned uh, that we are a platform technology and we are capable, we do have the ability to look at any FFPE tissue section uh, with our chemistry. We've looked at breast, we're looking at prostate, I mentioned psoriasis, and in fact we're also uh, just submitted a grant to do uh, liquid biopsy where we're interested in looking at m biomarkers or markers on circulating tumor cells. Um, this is our, our traction to date. Two things I want to bring up. We got our first commitment for revenue. So as a company, somebody's going to write us a check and hopefully it clears. And second, we just got into Stanford Stardex Accelerator Program, which is a big, uh, a, a big accomplishment for us that brings a ton of resources and credibility for uh, us as a small group of entrepreneurs. Thank you for your time. What's the function? Oh, um, the question was um, in the slide where you had a row of healthy, what's the function of that? Okay, so, so what we're doing in that case in the experiment, we're masking off these different regions. So we look at the tissue on the screen and we circle, I want to extract nucleic acid from this region, right? And so in the experiment, we had two regions that were healthy, one region that was tumor and healthy and re one region that was just tumor. Right? And so we extracted, uh, in this case, RNA, and then we analyzed both samples separately, and then we just compared the results. This is a benchmark compared to the tissue? Yeah. So again, the, the, the goal of the proof of concept is can we see spatial data? Can we resolve a spatial, da spatial data, or can we see a difference? Healthy is going to be different than tumor. So we simply want to ask the question, when we look at this 177 gene panel, look at the expression of 177 genes, do we see different expression levels in the tissue? So very simple. Yes? What is our subscription price? Yes, so, uh, so yes, we do have a subscription model. It's a, a um, uh, recurring revenue model. And that's still something we're considering and thinking about. Um, what I showed you is new data, and as a matter of fact, Bedon and I started working on this particular tissue application about a year ago. We went head down in the lab for a year to see if we could accomplish this. But I would say if, you know, it's hard for me to tell. We, we, we throw numbers around based on comps for doing biomarker analysis, um, which is for biomarker analysis, a comp comparison is $5,000 per test, but um, it's not, fun. that's for a totally different application. Right, so I we, we can we can I can get you some more information on that, but it's going to be less than it's going to be a lot less than five thousand. I shouldn't have said that number, so forget I said five thousand. So, the, so we, we got our, oh sorry, the question was why did we land on psoriasis and prostate cancer? Um, we, we got our, our proof of concept data January 2nd. We went to J.P. Morgan and presented and we, had, we got um, and people coming up to talk to us. Um, and two were from prost for working on prostate cancer. One, the prostate cancer model is to do T cell receptor sequencing and we're very interested in that. And the other model is to do, um, to look for certain markers for prostate. We're working on those two, two, two cancers right now simply because we're trying to generate data and we have collaborators that are interested in, in evaluating our technology. Psoriasis came to us through uh, an incubator we were at and the, the, the psoriasis model is interesting to us because it's a different disease and it also uh, demonstrates the sort of the flexibility of the platform, and it's just actually super cool if you look at the tissue sections and the, the immune infiltrate is pretty amazing. So a lot of that is to support the incubator we're at so that they can generate data to get grants and so forth. But we're not cons constrained to those. So right now, we're, right now we're, we're looking for co-development opportunities. We're working and talking to a, a pathology lab uh, in Singapore and uh, a big pharma company that's interested in evaluating the technology. Our goal, our ultimate goal, is to become a clinical lab and offer clinical tests. 
So we have the quality systems in place, we have our documents in place, and we know that path. We know that path. But if I was to tell you where we're at, at the very beginning. Yeah, we're looking at multiple, not just 10 on one tissue section. So we're looking at 10. So, so imagine looking at 50 regions of 10 cells in the same tumor, right? And we're able to sequence so those. Them. Yes, yes, instead of, instead of you know, scraping all of the material into a tube. 